Well, I gave one myself, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Micro polls, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. Uh, got a phone call last year uh, from a resident. Actually, it was a couple of phone calls, I'm not sure neighbors or something, I'm not sure. About uh, Stevenson Street and uh, making Stevenson Street basically a three lane road versus a uh, four lane road and putting on a bike and pedestrian lanes on both ends. And so uh, I'm just drawing here that's being passed out. <coughs> Uh, you'll see how the four lanes are currently striped. And what we're proposing is to restripe it on the, on the uh, diagram on the right, where you have uh, a bike walking lane, you have a one lane of traffic each direction, and the third lane would be a turn lane. And so we're asking people to uh, uh, fill out a survey and ask on the back of this. So if you want to you know, fill it out or you can go online and do it uh, either way. But, uh, uh, this is this concept. I didn't realize it by starting doing some research. It's also in the the, the park district's uh, recreation plan. It's also in our comprehensive plan. I, I don't remember seeing it, but it's in there to put this concept in because we're trying to connect some of our bike trails with the college, with the hospital, with all the parks in there. So this would be part of our, our whole uh, master plan uh, as far as connective connectivities to the city and, and some of our different uh, places of uh, uh, that people either work or play or, or shop or whatever, because we're also looking at, like I said, going down to uh, the mall area too. Uh, excuse me, not the mall, but the Meadows. I want to call it Meadows Mall, but they're trying to rebrand it just to Meadows, so Meadows, it's kind of hard just to say Meadows. Uh, other projects we have going on right now, uh, Chicago Avenue, uh, that's a $5 million project that's right on schedule right now. Uh, hopefully construction will be completed in November. They're pouring some of the uh, concrete curb from Douglas to uh, Exchange right now. And uh, we've got some work to do on some of those older buildings that have got bolts underneath the sidewalk that you see there used to bring their products in or cold for the old cold storage that convert either to storage or the bathrooms and stuff. So uh, some of those buildings need to have some work done before we can continue on. But but I'm quite pleased with the construction. We're replacing some water mains that are ever in that street place last street back in 1880. Uh, so you can imagine that you know the kind of condition they're in uh, and that and then we're replacing sewer lines, taking the power lines and put those on the ground as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the whole that whole strip basically from Spring to Douglas is going to be redone and new curb gutter, curb gutter some street furniture, new lighting and that and try to help promote that part of uh, downtown as our uh, recreation cultural district between the uh, uh, the, the, uh, the different uh, restaurants and uh, movie theater. And at the time we started this whole project, started talking about it. we had a bike shop there too, it's that kind of and everything, but it since uh, they've left town. But, uh, so that's, that's part of the project. We've got uh, uh, a lot of resurfacing going on right now in different neighborhoods. Um, I think uh, this project, one project we have is we're doing uh, Birchard, basically from uh, Lincoln to the water tower. And that's, that's going to be a project and we're working with the park district on that as well because they're going to uh, expand or eventually they're going to make bigger that parking lot that's across the street from the little, little league field because cars right now stick out and they're going to pay uh, to, to move it, move that, that in a little bit. So we're going to connect a, a sidewalk, bike trail, concrete walk like we, uh, we have on, uh, on Empire Down, Virtue to the first, uh, the first driveway. So that we have a connectivity again from the Empire to the park. Again. Are there any questions you have? We got a lot of things going on. And, um, if you have anything specific you want to ask me, I'm, I'm here. If you have any questions you have? If you think of something later, you know, catch me after the meeting. Is anybody that the students are speaking, do anybody that can come off of that live on Stevenson Yes, as a matter of fact, we've had, I think, 400 people respond so far to our survey. Yeah. Well, they, 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 they wanted that idea, 
And if those oh, people I'm, actually live there? That I don't know, but I can tell you that the people that live on Stevenson have been contacted. We sent out uh, surveys to them. Yeah, we're uh, making sure to get input from the, uh, the businesses and the church and all those, because obviously it's going to affect them. So we want to get their opinions on it too. It's not set in stone yet. We're uh, taking the public's opinion uh, into consideration and making the, the, the changes made. So. Yeah, I hope you listen to the people that actually live on that street in that area because it's just I don't or know, last weekend there were two bicycles all the year. Two. And you know it it's Peter, but it's just part. it's just the well, that's what accidents when it can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one thing too is that by by going to the uh, new new layout, that's just gonna slow down traffic. Oh, 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 well, you have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Let me scroll it does. If they do drive this. Yeah, sure. Eric? Yeah, well, I see some new faces. Uh, I'm Eric, for those of you who don't know, I'm the first word alderman here. I'm sorry, it's a little, little tardy. Got out of work a little late. I work in Rockford, so I uh, fly here from, from there. Uh, I know all about the speed. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, and that's one of the things is I've grown to know Stevenson Street in the 35 years I've lived here as a two lane road. So it's a change like this is dramatic, and, and you know, there's probably some good arguments on both sides of it. I know my dad is 100% opposed to it, and I've had a long conversation with him, it was mainly him telling me everything that was wrong with it. Um, but there's also some benefits that, that uh, have worked in other like I said, we're going to take uh, the results of that survey into consideration, and the, the council will end up making a, a vote on that. Well, we might, right? Yeah. We might, can't say it won't happen. Can't say, well, let's listen and see what the survey says. Um, Wayne, I see you're here. Did you have anything? Or is it Josh, are you, you want to go first? It doesn't matter. Right? You can go, John, if you're ready. Now you can. You can go ahead. All right. Um, you're a new face here. Right? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, I just want to start by saying thank you to Eric for inviting me to come. So um, it's been a pleasure to be here. I do community economic development for the uh, city of Freeport. I've been here since January, and it's uh, honestly been a great experience for me. And coming out and seeing a community like this is also a great experience. Um, so. Thank you for having me, all of you. Um, I, just, well, I will say that uh, Randy did a great job. He started the meeting and, and really covered many things. One thing I, I saw on here that he left probably for me to cover was the uh, you know, nuisance inspections we've been doing. So one thing when I came here I really wanted to focus on was getting out and taking in calls and making sure that we get our inspectors out to uh, respond to these calls. So one thing I, I know that one of our statistics here that uh, Randy had handed out is showing that we're already 5% ahead of the average. And kind of what this average is talking about, a lot of times when you're talking about statistics, people don't understand or they can, and that's rightfully so. It's easier for my staff to understand the statistics because we're doing it every day. So one thing I did when I came in was I said, okay, we've had a platform, a program that was tracking what we were doing with our inspections. And we started doing that, the data was solid from 2019. So I said from 2019, 20, 21, and 22, I just started taking the averages per month and then adding those up to see how are we performing throughout the year on an average from 19 to 22. You know, so when people are asking how are we doing, it's, it's easier for me to, to talk about it. Um, and right now, we're already 5% ahead of where we are at the end of July. So when these statistics were taken, you know, one thing I kind of noted when I was looking at these statistics, was that we're probably gonna be closer to 10% ahead of where we've been uh, since 2019. So that's something I'm really proud of, and, and it's it will eventually add up to results. It takes time, and that's just one thing I wanna say is there's more to looking at nuisances and people are upset about their yards, people are upset about the house. It starts with these inspections, and, and it takes patience. And I know we're here because it's a neighborhood watch, and you all are talking about, you know, crimes in the area and, and there are nuisances but I wanted to let you know that I'm doing my best 
to take the calls in and to make sure we're inspecting them. And then also on top of that, um, moving forward in the uh, administrative hearing process. So that's one thing I wanted to report about. Um, you know, there's, there's also um, anything else you guys have to uh, ask me questions about, please feel free. Are you responsible then for the city tech site? I am not working with the tech site, although I do know there have been issues with the tech. I do know there have been some technical issues with the tech site. Well, I love it. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, um, yeah, I, I don't I I can't remember how it happened to find it, but I have I walk daily and so frequently see I don't know long one. So yeah. on American Street, water running in the gutter. And so I just get on there and just and send it off. It's easy to do. You can attach a picture if you want, or, or if that's available. And um, the results have been regular and and positive. Well, that's good. I, I think that's one thing, you know, if, if you hear something good too, we'll we'll take the good news as well. Yes, sir, Randy. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, because we do have a new uh, app. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. This one's a lot, lot more user friendly okay. and, and a lot easier to use. Where uh, the one we had before uh, was really clumsy and it goes through all kinds of different things. But yeah, if you got the new app, and if you don't have the new app, you really should get it because it is really nice to use. What's it called? Yeah. Uh, uh, Senior Freeport. Uh, I have it. Can you go just on the on the website and get it? Uh, it's on the website. Okay. I'm not sure if you can download it. It's called it. Text My Gov, right? Uh, yeah. That's the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the old one. We have a new yeah. one. Yeah. It's just, I just have I'm going to Freeport, Illinois City Hall. But it's still online. But, yeah. but uh, good question. We'll find out. And Eric has a uh, mailing list. Well, maybe yeah. you could. So when you're talking about nuisances, sure. you're talking about like unmown lawns or yes. Yes. okay. And yes. what other kinds of things? Well certainly. I mean we I gotta tell us everybody, please call um, our office for this concern. And basically it would be, you know, you, you notice that um, maybe there's a bad roof and your neighbor hasn't fixed the roof in a while. You notice the stairwell that hasn't been a nuisance could be as simple as just something like that with the property that's it's a code violation you know, okay. it's, and I know sometimes people feel they want to handle it with their neighbors first you know and I, I understand that we're people too but the city is here as a partner to truly help out with that mm -hmm. and um, you know I'll be honest with you I've had you're always gonna have complaints both sides but I have heard some great uh, feedback from my staff and they're, they're working very hard <coughs> And um, it's actually been, I've been very impressed with the positive feedback I've had from my inspectors. So but that's what it is. If, you, okay. if you're seeing, and I, and I know it, there, there's many buildings that have had issues, you know, that have had concerns and, you know, I can't, but it, as I started off by saying, I can't promise, I wouldn't stand up here and say everything's gonna be fixed. But <coughs> I am trying to increase the inspections and then also increase, um, have more positive outcomes. Do you Sorry. also handle sidewalks that are become Probably. broken and, and yeah. start, you know, they become a hazard? We will investigate sidewalks. That's a combination of us and public works, but we will investigate a sidewalk. If, it's, if a property owner has a sidewalk that hasn't been maintained, we will go out there and inspect that and issue a citation if necessary. And I say combination of public works because if there was something, like if it was a legitimate concern with the, the city tree that hit it, then we, I will work whatever departments I have to to make sure it's not an easy issue. You mentioned the sidewalk. Sure. I, um, I take care of my grandchildren. They were riding their bike down the sidewalk and there was a cone sitting in the middle of the sidewalk. I thought, well, what's that there for? Sure. Well, when I moved it, there's this huge hole. So I'm assuming the city put that in there. And I'm just curious as to when they're going to come back and fill it in. Well, that would be a certain well, public works. Yeah, well, it's definitely public works, and I'm going to call on my department as well. We can find. I would say find well, out when they're going to yeah, fill so that in. Yeah, where that hole is. Seems like that's a dangerous like that. Sure. Yes, sir. 
to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, does the uh, city of Freeport have an ordinance that regulates the number of vehicles, and I mean automobiles, uh, boats, uh, uh, recreational vehicles, per uh, single family resident, or I any do, for that matter? I do know for a fact that I can speak on it. I have looked at that ordinance because that when, I, when I'm called on it, I check into it. One thing I know for sure is that you have to be parked on pavement. Okay. You cannot park on a lawn. Yep. Um, I have to look into that and see what there's actual, what the off-street parking requirements are. A lot of times it's determined on single family, multi-family, or a minimum requirement. I'm not sure if there's a, I don't believe there's a maximum, but don't quote me on that. But I do know one thing we're always checking on is to ensure that we don't want people parking on grass gotcha. under any circumstances. So if you have a neighbor that's parking on grass or, you know, it's unorderly or has, a, has an unsightly vehicle, certainly call us. Well, so, uh, first of all, the easy answer is, is it's our code. Um, well, that, I mean, I, no, no, I wasn't saying that to me. I wasn't saying that to me. No, but I just like, you would think that that would be okay because it's not up on the street anyway. Well, you know what? You have to think about the city as a whole. And you have to also kind of think about, I think there's a couple different things there. Number one, it does, it can eventually create ruts in yards. Okay. So, you know, if you're thinking about it, you know, if you have somebody who has a bigger truck or even a lighter car, you know, now they're getting their car stuck in the front yard and now they're kind of bringing property values down. Okay, in that yeah, sense. That, um, I just was puzzled by that. Like, a lot of times codes, code issues are like, well, what's the big deal if he's just parking in his yard? Well, then what if every single person did that with every single one of their cars? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of one of those things where you have to regulate it to okay. a certain extent to prevent it from getting to the worst case scenario, even though oftentimes it's just somebody trying to make it so they can get in and out of the park, yeah. the yeah. driveway. Yeah. That's what they were having a garage sale and there were people driving across the area and down my driveway it would be my whole car. It sounds like <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they moved. Yeah. Anybody driving over your yard without your permission yeah. sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think it's totally understandable that when we have snowstorms and we have uh, parking regulations that keep people off the street, um, I think it's understandable that they could park part of their vehicle on the lawn for the time until the, until the snow gets removed. Um, but I think what's not understandable is when they park a vehicle on the lawn and after a while, all the lawn underneath it is dead in the silhouette of the vehicle that was parked on it. I think that could be excessive. Sure. No, I appreciate that. I think you're, you, you know, with the nail on the head. That's the inspiration behind these ordinances is to, you know, it, it's to keep the property, so number one, keep the community safe, but there is also some, you know, property value aspects that are as well to keep things nice and orderly. And, but there's a health aspect that too. We don't, certainly don't want dead grass or we don't want leaking, you know, um, if there's an oil leak or something leaking into the ground. We don't want that killing the grass. So. Well, uh, Wayne, thanks for being here. So Wayne, Wayne's the director of community development and you recently got, I believe it was your master's in public administration. Yes, I know. Northern yeah. Illinois University. So he's another member, director, uh, department head that we have on our staff that we're proud to have. So thanks for having us. Thanks, man. And then we have a oh, officer. Um, no, I don't think they grabbed it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's Corporal Joshua Leverton here. Yes. I, I'd you, like to stay you, here. You. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you might have to turn a little bit. Uh, maybe some you can't see. There's a reason. Is I, uh, I tore some ligaments in my, at my foot the other day. So uh, sitting is good for me, in fact, as part of the, the rice. Rest, ice, compression, elevation, I got them all. So I'm on the resting, I don't quite have it elevated. It was, I was lying on the couch earlier today feeling very lazy. Um, so I thought I'd come here, it'll be useful to some extent. Um, but if you don't know me, I'm Josh Lovers, and I'm with the police department. Um, I've been here uh, for almost nine years now. Um, and before this, I worked over by Chicago for a couple of years, and I was born and raised in, in Lena, so I've spent almost all my life here except for the two years where I was over by Chicago and that was enough time for me to realize I 
Asia, the bank of the city. So here I am, I'm back. Um, so there's a variety of different things that uh, I've got on the um, little handout. Uh, most of it is stuff that involves you know, other sides of town specifically. Um, there was one um, kind of uh, a bit of an incident that happened on Knox Drive. Um, I don't know if anyone in this area lives on Knox Drive or heard about this incident. Um, but I thought I would cover it just because uh, I know I know the streets talk and word gets around. Um, so this was actually on the 4th of July and there was a confrontation on Knox Drive, um, which was kind of a follow-up from a incident that happened elsewhere in town and people met up at this house um, and there was one individual that was outside that was brandishing a gun um, ended up being a BB gun um, but it was one of those guns that was a replica real firearm um, so he actually still had it when we showed up on scene so I mean that was something that could have gone you know pretty bad depending on what the individual would have done but uh, when we showed up he was cooperated with us and dropped the fire, the firearm, which ended up being that BB gun. Um, and then, he, naturally, you probably shouldn't be brandishing anything that looks like a gun out in public. So that individual did end up getting arrested um, and, and charged with uh, some offenses in regards to that incident. Um, and in the end, the, the, the argument was really kind of nonsensical. It didn't really make much sense to begin with. Um, but I know, like I said, that was something that I mean, if he would have been on, living on the street and saw it, he would have been quite alarmed and disturbed by what was going on. Uh, so I'd rather cover that just in case anybody, anybody uh, heard about that. Um, there's been a couple arrests um, for burglary slash uh, scrapping um, copper and stuff from vacant residences. That's something that we run into we, usually it seems like there's somebody involved in this every year that's doing this, uh, going into empty houses, um, taking out all the copper wiring, the copper piping from the basements, um, and then basically scrapping them out just to get a little bit of money. Um, so we had one that was on the 400 block of Northwest Avenue, which is, I know, kind of, kind of way over there, but it was a guy that, uh, this Justin Reed that we arrested, um, he gets around town and um, he actually got in trouble previously. Uh, couple years ago for houses on West Stevenson Street, like by the hospital. Um, so he's kind of been an entrepreneur and criminal, I guess, and kind of getting, up, getting around town. Um, so this is just something just to keep an eye on. If you know people that own houses that are maybe empty or have fixer uppers, is try to keep an eye on those properties because those are targets for these people that are looking to scrap stuff. And I mean, they'll just go in and spend three hours in the basement just cutting off any single piece of copper that they can find, and then when the homeowner shows up, then they've got thousands of dollars worth of damage um, in their basements. So uh, I know we don't really have a whole lot of vacant or empty properties over on this side of town, but there's a few. Uh, we had this individual did go into some houses that were empty and were being sold. Um, and so nice houses that we saw, oh, it's empty, it's for sale, and he went in. So just keep an eye when you, uh, in your neighborhood if you know that there's some properties that are like that and just be watchful. Um, this was a guy who would show up like on a bike um, and then would cram all of the stuff and maybe like a backpack or like a plastic tote container and then just kind of get picked up by somebody out in front of the house and throw all the stuff in. So in cases like that, if something seems unusual, feel free to call us. It's usually pretty easy for us to get a hold of the actual property owner um, and see is there anybody supposed to be there and then kind of go that route. Um, another thing that we've kind of been having an issue with in town and it's actually more so been out in the county are catalytic converters. I've switched that off of vehicles. The catalytic converter is part of the exhaust system um, and we've been having some people in town out of out in Stevenson County that have been sawing off these and again kind of a similar thing. Take it to a junkyard, scrap it out, get a little bit of money. Um, so far, they've been targeting like larger, like truck or RV type vehicles, um, which a lot of those will sit and not be used for an extended period of time, and then the people will come and try to use it, and then realize that they're missing half their exhaust, um, which has made it that has made it a little bit difficult for us as far as getting t you know timelines down because a lot of time we'll have somebody will say I haven't used it in two months, which makes it 
pretty tough to track. Um, we've developed a few different suspects. Um, we work pretty closely with the uh, local scrap yards in town. Um, we think that they're probably taking most of the stuff out to like either out in maybe up in Wisconsin or over to Rockford because uh, like Gray Lanes and Mowry's they, they do a pretty good job uh, of you're supposed to like get if somebody comes in and scrap stuff like that they're supposed to show their ID um, you get a picture of the ID have like a the scrap yard would then have like a documentation of the receipt that they would keep with the person's ID so it's generally pretty easy when people start taking in a whole bunch of catalytic converters um, and we think that they're probably mostly going to Rockford because Rockford maybe doesn't Not a sure that quite as much maybe. But, yes sir. Uh, will we be allowed to respond to any of these or? What do you mean? Well I have some input I'd like to do on number one. Uh, sure. The Knox Drive thing and I just wanted to uh, speak to what you mentioned. Yes, you, you got something? That's fine. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, my name is Jim Stocks. I live at 3212 Knox Drive, which is right next door to that first incident that Officer Leverton uh, spoke of. Um, he did a fine job with that, and I think probably because of his training and his uh, um, experiences, he uh, spoke to it in a mild type fashion. I am not that person at all. I was there, I witnessed, I called the police. Um, excuse me, my wife called the police while I was photographing what was going on. On that address in question, there was more than one incident where police and or fire department were called. I saw the state police there, I saw the county sheriff there, I saw the city of Freeport there, I saw the city of Freeport fire department there, and the city of Freeport fire chief. That sounds to me like a little bit more than uh, miscommunication or, or some other problem. At least, I will say this, from my point of view, which was pretty plain, it shook me up a lot. We have upwards of 16 kids that live in that immediate area. And here's a man on the second incident uh, showing body language that he was obviously um, distraught. He was obviously very angry and yelling and cussing at my neighbor, or at least my neighbor's house. My neighbor was in there. I don't know where that was and then he brandished the fire alarm, what looked like the fire alarm. Now I don't know if you explained to him how dangerous something like that can be, but if you they go to a neighborhood and you start brandishing a fire alarm, in this day and age, I can guarantee you there's partner an arsenal on that street. And if he starts shooting at somebody, there's going to be some issues. Um, and in speaking with some of the other neighbors, they agreed to the point where I thought, oh, you were doing the same thing I was. I know exactly where my firearm is, and I knew exactly when I had to go get it. And I was absolutely um, thankful to God that that didn't happen. I think it's oh, that's a, something that could have been it, it, really it, bad. It could have been. It could have been terrible, and and, uh, it, and and then it looked like at the situation with the people that were with him that came up to there in, in that black SUV were trying to um, film and or uh, exasperate this whole situation into making it look like the police were being unfair with this person that they finally had down and had him release that firearm. So th this was a big deal. This was a big deal for me, country boy from Podunk, and uh, and it was a big deal for the for the for the families with children. Um, and I think that <clears throat> I think that the, that neighborhood is owed feedback. 
outside of the norm where you have to go in and, and look and see what is public information and what is not, I think that there ought to be feed, feedback to that. Um, there is more to the story we both know, but I'm not going to I'm not going to bring up any more than that. It, it would serve no purpose. Um, but there were uh, there was on the third uh, visit by the authorities two people sleeping in one of those cars that was parked on the grass, um, <clears throat> and and I don't know who called 911 because nobody in the neighborhood could see them. They were all squunched down in the seat. I'm presuming they slept there all night. Yeah. And I'm presuming they were just kind of waiting on my neighbor. Waiting for him to come back. Yeah. But anyway, enough said. Uh, to say that that the neighborhood wasn't in, in shock would be, would be right. uh, no. not true. So, Thank you. Sure. Um, one other thing to, well, there's a few things, but one thing to look at that I think would be fairly interesting for everyone if you haven't is on our Facebook page. Um, we posted, uh, maybe a week ago, we posted uh, pictures um, of all the firearms that we've recovered um, this year. Um, and it's totaled on, on up to 53 through about the first six months, um, which 53 firearms, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but. To me, that, that's, a, that's a lot of firearms um, to recover, um, which kind of says a couple things. Um, number one, we've got our guy that uh, is in the gang unit um, in town, does a great job, and he's been the one responsible for a lot of these. And he's done a phenomenal job. Um, number two, it says that obviously there is a problem in Freeport. There's a lot of people with firearms that shouldn't have firearms. Um, and if you go through, you can kind of just go through all the pictures. And, each picture has like a little caption that kind of really briefly explains what the circumstances were behind it and it also shows pictures of the firearms. I mean, it's just a whole, all sorts of different firearms on there. And it is something that uh, I think is very informational and educational to, to look at and see what kind of issues um, that we, we do face here in Freeport and certain areas of town and um, stuff that we at the police department um, it's very, it's very serious because um, with the number of people that we come in contact with that do illegally possess firearms, I, we've been very blessed so far that uh, there haven't been any issues with uh, police involved shootings um, for, I don't know when the last one has been, quite a long time since we've had a police involved shooting. Um, and I mean, any one of these incidents where we do a traffic stop, somebody has a firearm or get out with someone and they have a firearm and they take off running. Um, I mean, it could be something that uh, could go very bad very quickly. And I know the, the in the news there's been, you know, headline after headline um, of people getting shot that shouldn't have been shot. And I think that this does show that uh, we at the police department, we, we do a very good job um, with interacting with these people um, and not just getting out and lighting people up. Uh, we, rather, we, we don't want that, nobody wants that. Um, we would rather that uh, if, you know, if they run, that's that's fine. Run and toss the gun, that's usually what they do. And if we catch the person, that's great. If not, if they get away, we get their gun. Um, but we'd much rather have that than somebody turn and all of a sudden there's a shootout in the middle of the street. Uh, but yeah, take a look at the Facebook page. It says quite a bit of stuff. Um, just a lot of pictures, um, 53 of them actually, um, of different firearms. Um, I have a little bit, a few things there on the, on the right then about some of our recent uh, shots fired incidents, including there was a homicide over the weekend on, the, on July 21st. Um, I can't go into a whole lot of detail about that um, as far as you know, investigation and stuff. Um, when I initially printed this out, they hadn't released any sort of name or anything. Um, I believe they did release the name yesterday. Um, it was an individual that lived in Freeport for most of his life, uh, somebody I, I was familiar with. Um, and anytime anybody gets shot and killed um, or shot at all, I mean, it's a tragedy on all sorts of different levels, um, no matter their walk of life, what they've, what they've done or didn't do. And I, I don't want you to take that as me saying that this individual is a bad person. Um, He's, he's not, um, he's not, he's, he's a victim, it's a tragedy. We have families, people mourning, um, it's, it's a terrible thing. Um, we do have a suspect that's been identified um, in that. Um, B 
beyond that, I really can't give a whole lot more information. Uh, but uh, it's something that I, I can tell you that anytime there's a homicide, something like this, I mean, the detective bureau just puts in hours and hours and hours of work in, uh, in these cases. And um, we don't always, aren't always able to bring a case to get someone, which we hate that just as much as the family and friends do. Um, yes, ma'am. I that was my question. It's obvious just from the paper. You know a lot of gang members. Mm -hmm. You know who these people are. Why can you not do more to like, stop them before they have another shootout or something like that? Well, I would say that the 53 guns that we've gotten has stopped a lot. I was thinking more but, of an individual basis. And an indi you can't just. Uh, you can't arrest somebody unless you know you can have enough evidence Correct. to go to trial and convict them. Correct. Yeah. But is there no I don't know, counseling or anything like that that might help them? You know, I can speak to that a little bit. Our probation and pretrial services department in Stevenson County is growing. And uh, what the state of Illinois has done, um, whether you agree with it or not, is really reducing the ability for to keep dangerous people off the streets and trying to get them into programs like you're mentioning. But you can't force someone to get treatment. It's like you can't, you know, leave a horse to water, you can't make it drink, but you, you know, you can't force somebody to take the steps and actually buy into the treatment. Um, and there's a lot to that. It's not just you're gonna meet with a counselor once a week. Um, there, there's a lot, you know, so it's not ideally the everybody should have access to these services. Um, but it, it does require um, buy-in on the on the patients or the you know the individual's part, and you know that's just doesn't always happen. You, you had a question there? Yeah, if you were, I was waiting on you. The yeah, yeah. Went soon, so I interrupted. Uh, a, a comment. Uh, I wasn't going to comment on this, but um, what made me think about my next question was, I don't know if you guys know that uh, we live on uh, Pearl City Blacktop. We just moved into the Yellow House right by Highland. Uh, right across from the maintenance place, closed on December, so if you see paint and stuff going up, we're finally fixing it. So, <laughs> yeah, there. Um, and there was a huge accident right on our front lawn a few days ago. Uh, that, praise God, nobody died, which was stunning. Uh, if you didn't know, a tractor trailer demolished this woman's car, just destroyed it. There was, I, there, there was no wheels left. Uh, strewn out stuff all over my yard. So praise God, no one died, which was a miracle. Now, let me believe this lady's question brings me to my next question. Because I was asking, you guys have a chaplain? And they said, well, only if basically if somebody died, they would call somebody in. So I have the next question, because me being a Christian guy, that's kind of how we treat things. I haven't lived here my whole life. I was born in Illinois, but lived down south for about 25 years. So, <laughs> yeah, everybody can hear, I still have those, some of those yeah. mannerisms, but I'm born Yankee, but born, so, at any rate, so that would be my next question. Do you have chaplaincy sort of partnership? <clears throat> I went to a church that we went to inside homeless shelters, and those homeless shelters required Bible studies, and those homeless shelters normally had a lot of people that were in and out of prisons, that's why they were in homeless shelters. Uh, so, did you have chaplains? Do we, you have any we connections? Do. So, we do churches. We do have chaplains. We also, there is, um, in town, there's the Freeport Area Church Cooperative, okay. and they operate, it's a group of churches together, and they operate a, um, a homeless shelter on Chicago Avenue, um, south of downtown, um, a few blocks, and we have some, we have some pretty good ties with the operators um, at the uh, homeless shelter there. Um, and talk to them. Um, as far as you know, community integration, there's different stuff that uh, we do. We started up a, um, something at the uh, Martin Luther King Center um, where at least once a month we'll go there and we have a meeting um, and we'll also, because the kids, usually every night there's kids that go in um, and play basketball um, pretty much all, all year round. Um, and so we, we'll have some officers go in there from time to time. Um, as well. Um, I'm not saying we're perfect, but I'm sure there's more that we could do. Um, it's a tough, 
mean, this is, if, if anyone has a solution, um, I'd love to hear it, because, I mean, there's just, when you go into this issue of gang, gang members, gang violence, the gang culture, the lifestyle, and how do you get someone out of it, how do you turn someone away from it, I, I wish I could give you an answer, right? It's, I mean, it's heartbreaking, um, it really is, because, like, some of, some of the kids that, that I like saw like when they're eight or nine are now the ones that we're catching with firearms. Um, like a lot of the, the majority of the people we catch with firearms are, are teenagers under 18 or around that. And it's terrible. Um, and what do you do to stop it? I mean, there's so many different things you can try and you can do. And, uh, you know, we aren't perfect. It's a police department, and I, but I don't know if there is a perfect solution to it. Um, like me personally, I, I'm a member, I, I've uh, been with the uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters program, um, which is something where you kind of, the, the program matches up uh, kids in the community with an older adult. Um, and so I've done that with my, my uh, kid, my little, I guess you would call it, uh, for six or seven years. Um, and you know, there's stuff that we try. Um, some people, I, I don't know if there have been situations where the gang life is the life, and how do you get someone out of it? I, it's, it's so tough. Um, I don't know what the perfect answer is. I, I did some prison ministry in North Carolina, and uh, mm -hmm. just some insight. I, I remember talking to one of the guys that I talked to after he got out, and he uh, got a driver's license. And last I heard, he was living in Raleigh, he was getting married. It seemed to be everybody, uh, uh, they all had one thing, this is going to sound kind of crass, but everybody in prison had two things that got them in there. They wanted money right now, and there was a lady involved. That's Almost 100% of the time, they're awesome. in prison because they wanted money, and they wanted it right now. And there's somewhere along the line, there was a lady involved that they shouldn't have been around. And, and all the guys, they pretty much... Whether it's drugs, whether it was the gun, whether it was, it's all about trying to get cash right now. And by, as a Christian, it's like you got to replace the cash with something else. And for most of them, they don't have that around. That's always an issue. And so, uh, uh, so I can offer my services, by the way. Uh, yeah, I can talk if you're interested in that. You sure. can reach out to the Stevenson County Jail. Um, they're through the sheriff's office, which is separate than the police department. Um, I know they've done some, they have some chaplain in, in prison services that they do offer. So I don't know what the process is to get involved with it or not, but that would be through the, the Stevenson County Sheriff's Office that you could, could reach in for that. Um, we have a few other things here. I've got kind of a, a little bit of an explanation on the license plate reader system that we have installed. Um, it's, it's very, very helpful uh, for us. Uh, I'm not gonna go into in detail, you can read about it. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, or, or anything in regards to that, you can always feel free to talk to me. Um, I know we're, we're starting to get, get along on time, but, but does anyone have any questions, anything else? I do appreciate the feedback and, and the discussions. Um, I feel it's very educational. Does that, anybody have anything, any other questions for me or Eric or anybody? Yes, ma'am. I actually do. Um, since we've moved here, I'm starting to see in Illinois, well, this part of Illinois. I'm not from Illinois. I was born and raised in South, but um, in South Carolina. But there's a lot of pedophilia here, and our ch we're recently having a problem where there is a young man for the last week has been coming and parking at the college every day. And I kept telling my husband because my kids were like, "Mom, this guy's staring at us every day." Mm -hmm. and we can't play out front out in our yard. I'm like, well, you're not, this isn't jail. I'm not going to make you stay in the house all day long. You're, this is your land and your property. You have a right to go play. But every day, and he, my husband's like, well, we should probably be a college student. And I'm like, a college student is going to sit in his car facing our house every day. And then on Saturday and Sunday, he's parking in the entryway of the college facing our house every day. So do you guys have incidents like that where there's people just watching children or families or women just sitting there 
Lex Totten. It, it, it was weird. Yeah. I, I walked to the actually edge of the fence, and it got to the point where I walked to the edge of my fence and waved at it. When my husband Hi. told me, uh, like, dude, like, like, why I'm here. Like his, one morning, my daughter, I, one of our older daughters goes, she exercises, and I don't let them go around the college because they're too young to do that alone. But she goes out, she runs in the morning. And she says she started noticing him just sitting there. Right. As she's running when she's got her headphones on, but I don't, and our yard is fenced. But she's like, I just feel uncomfortable. So now she doesn't go run anymore. And He's got she, she goes out between nine ten nine o'clock, nine thirty ish, and he sits there until like eleven or twelve leaves, comes back and I clocked him one day. I just said I just took a book and sat outside. And from two till ten minutes till nine, he sat in the car all day. Yeah, that's that's very didn't get out, just sit there all day. She got the plate, so she was gonna. So uh, I was like, like okay, well, I'm sorry, I'm something. a country girl, so I'm not just gonna sit there and be right. like, oh, no, I'm scared. So I just got in one of my mini vehicles mm -hmm. and drove around to the college park yeah. lot right behind him and looked at it, wrote down his plate, and I'm not gonna say what I saw, because I tried to tell my husband, he said, I don't want to know. Yeah, he would know. And he mm -hmm. looked very startled. So, um, yeah, I did. I drove past him because of what he was doing. And I'm like, okay, this, we, I can't, you're not, he's not home every day, he can't be. Right. But I'm home every day with our kids, and this man comes every day. And, and is that day. in Highland? On he the parked Highland in the property. The parking lot, yeah. not where students park. Our backyard so is, is meets yeah, up against the Highland. Yeah. So right. it's kind of weird, is that? The parking space is normally made right. like people will park there and they walk across yeah. to go to get in their vehicle. And we know them because we, yes. my husband's spoken to them, I've spoken to them. Um, and we we cut down some trees and stuff because the young man was getting hit in the face when he was on the lawnmower. So we've talked to them yeah. and interact with them. It's not this is not a student. This is okay. someone driving in, and he I don't know he usually turns right, so that's going towards Park City. And but sometimes now he's been turning left to leave, and he comes in right past our house and he pulls into a parking spot facing us. Yeah, that's, that is very right there that unless very strange. there's motorcycle training yeah. or something like or an event. Right. So, but so what I would do there. is the Highland campus is actually in the county jurisdiction, not the police department. Okay. okay. So you just if he's there, which sounds like you'll be there, just call. Him. They'll they'll talk to him. They're, they I almost know. always have an officer on the Highland campus, but of course if you go and call, they wouldn't. Right. They necessarily know, but I would I would just call. I mean, they can talk to him, and maybe it's as simple as he's using the Wi-Fi. That's there. That it could be, yeah, or maybe he's, he's Maybe he's using the Wi-Fi, or he could be homeless and he's just right. It could be. To sleep. But it's just you don't have to. You want to be safe. I saw the other day. I don't yes. think so. Yeah, you want to be safe. I so I would I would call, and they they can talk to him. They they know they'd be able to tell that he's being legit and saying what he's saying or if he's being a creeper they, we can usually tell pretty quickly um, and I would call I would call just call down the sheriff's office the next time he's there and just kind of tell them what you just told me and how he's always there it seems like he may be watching your kids and they'll send somebody out and talk to him okay. so the community college college is in the county all of it all of it all of it's in the county yes you are too if you're in the middle of the house yeah yeah I know we are but I didn't know because Highland senior yeah. It says it's just bigger, the right? it's, it's in Freeport, but it's our stuff. Because we can throw a rock and get the city limits out where we're at. It's not that far. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was called Donut Holes, and the, for some reason it annexed to the county and it never changed. Um, but I think it's a good kind of example of why we're here. And I think Josh would agree with this is when you think, see something that is suspicious, don't feel like you're doing something wrong by reporting it. You know, that's what neighborhood watches are all about, and it's just good, safe neighborhoods. Good neighbors are. Um, you could be completely wrong, but there's nothing wrong in you know having a good faith calling and saying there's just something not right about this. Could you guys you know come and check this out? And that's why they're there. There's a, always somebody on duty to come and check. So if it's you know if it's an emergency, obviously you call 911. Um, but situations like that, sometimes you call the non-emergency line and just say this is what's going on. Um, and if you have a, a reason to be suspicious about something, you have a reason to really call the police. So, you know, that's why we're here, so I encourage you all to do that. And like I always say, if you haven't done so already, look into uh, 
uh, home surveillance systems and video cameras and home security systems because that is something that really keeps the uh, uh, the trouble away um, when the, those uh, alarms and those video cameras uh, really uh, prevent a lot of burglaries. So uh, it's another thing I would encourage everyone, like I do every meeting, since this is a neighborhood watch meeting now, I'll say it again, I'm sure Josh agrees with me, those things mean a lot um, to uh, to protect your home and they're really helpful to the police too in situations where surveillance systems uh, may, might have captured something. So it's seven o'clock, typically that's the uh, time to conclude. If there are uh, other questions, I appreciate y'all for being here and appreciate the turnout. And Mr. Bukas is gonna ask a question for us. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, if you filled out those surveys, I'll collect them. Great, yeah, we appreciate your input on that. Like I said, I filled one out and I uh, was not very capable.